Hello, it is May 31st, 2013. It's on, this is Friday. Uh, right now, I figured I'd do another YouTube video. Oh my goodness! Ah! Anyway, here's what's going on right now. Um, yesterday, I published an article on my website, thenixtreport.com, link in the description, uh, because, well, I'm getting back in the game of going a little bit more often on the website and updating its content besides the podcasts. We do have plans to do that more often on, you know, start this Sunday. Last last week just was not a good week to do it. I was tired. And when rain goes, oh my goodness, I just get sleepy in a, in a hurry. So anyway, uh, what's happening right now is I published an article yesterday, like I said, in response to another article on another website asking if Canonical, this is the company that sponsors development of Ubuntu, which is a well-known distribution of Linux. Uh, they are one of the most well-known distributions. They get mentions in all sorts of publications and everything else that are very, very well regarded. Maximum PC, PC World, etc. And the question that the individual was asking is, oh, are, 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 does this mean they're insolvent? They cite, the source they cite only dealt with operations from the UK. Well, that doesn't tell the full story, and as it, I actually emailed Canonical itself, and one of the people from public relations responded saying, there's no way that you could, it's impossible to say entirely how the company's doing on this information alone. Um, there's more to it than that. We operate around the world. We're an international company, and plus, they're a privately held company, so that not all information is available to make a to Termination, and if people look around, they're still going to find articles saying that they're not cash flow positive yet. They're not. They're not profiting yet. Um, they're trying to find a way to make this thing self-sustaining. So in that regards, um, the thing is, it and it's easy to go in and say, oh well, th this company's horrible. They're not doing so well because they keep losing money. Well. Newsflash, um, it is not uncommon for businesses to not profit for five to seven years, especially if they're in that phase of investing in themselves and trying to grow their base out. Um, and th the same holds true for companies like Red Hat. It took them quite some time to really turn a profit. Um, do, doing just about any venture, even if you're an existing company. Microsoft, it took them quite some time to even turn a profit on their Xbox console, video game console. It took quite a while to do that. And they, they had to sink a lot of money into that. And they've learned the hard way that you can't always do, uh, you can't always cut corners on hardware. Otherwise, things start failing. You have to put enough memory in the console. Otherwise, games start crashing under certain scenarios. So, e even a company that's successful like Microsoft, they had to sink money, lots of money, into their video game console because, because it was a new thing. They were already competing with existing companies that were already well established. Nintendo, uh, Sony, they had a, Sony was already pretty well entrenched even though they haven't been in that arena as long as Nintendo had. So really the, the, the problem is and it, the the article in question was referred to as sensationalistic and I can see why. It's, and I, I can see what's going on with the particular website in question. And the thing is, 
maybe it'll work for them, maybe it won't, I don't know. But the thing is, when you're looking at things like that, make sure the full story is known. And the full story is, Canonical is a privately uh, held company. They operate internationally, and they file any documents that the law requires them to file. And one, one prominent example is Canonical Incorporated USA. They are a subsidiary of Canonical Limited in the UK. They are registered in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a corporate as a Delaware corporation that's not, not uncommon either uh, for taxation purposes and there's nothing much there it's just saying who the agent is for the, that corporation etc cetera, etc cetera. and very very little financial information at all. That's the, the extent of the public information available. Uh, they sent, I asked the appropriate people with the Secretary of State's office in Massachusetts, okay, do is there any records regarding, okay, how much money they made, how much money they lost, their, you know, assets, liabilities, all that sort of stuff. And they redirected me to their citizens information service and people there responded unless they voluntarily filed that stuff you know there it won't be there because well it's they're not obligated to it's considered private information they're a privately held company and that and that brings me to another point why would Canonical be a privately held company? Well, because they can have more control over themselves and how they operate. If you're a publicly traded company, you have to answer to shareholders, which can has its you know strengthnesses and weaknesses. And the biggest weakness is you're beholden to a board of directors and the shareholders themselves. So, you know, and that's why you hear stories of Dell wanting to go private again, so that that company has more control over its destiny. Because the, the bad part about being a publicly traded company is um, board of directors can basically, basically screw a company out of existence. And you, you, can, you can look into all kinds of things about companies getting raided by corporate raiders and bankruptcies and all sorts of all sorts of really bad stuff really and it's just oh my goodness so really it's just I'm gonna keep looking at this because to basically illustrate okay Th this company is only filing what they are required by law to file. And that's it. in Massachusetts. They're also registered up in Canada, in, in Taiwan. And that, that part's going to get challenging because I can't, I can't read the language that's used in their documents. I don't even know if the country's native language is used in their legal documents. So I may have to look into people who may know that type of, let's just say, system of writing, <laughs> per se, just, just to say, okay, the, the file, filing in the UK doesn't tell the full story. And again, the company is barely five years old. So, really, um, that's not uncommon for any for a lot of businesses to go five years, still not turn a profit. For a lot of companies, it can take longer than that. Five years is a is a um, milestone, but it's not a guarantee that that business is going to be there tomorrow. So, really, it takes perseverance and a lot of backing and 
Shuttleworth has the Bucks to back it with. So, uh, in reality, um, basically, what I'm in, in short, what I'm saying is there's really not a whole lot to that to that opinion piece it, in question, saying is it financially insolvent? Well, that uh, you know, one financial filing for for the UK is not going to tell the full story, and not all the information is going to be there. With that said. Will they? Will Canonical be here tomorrow, next year, two years from now? Only time will tell. And in reality, Ubuntu will still exist without Canonical. That's why the Ubuntu Foundation was set up in the first place. Should Canonical disappear, the Ubuntu Foundation will step in to steward Ubuntu. Unfortunately, the author of the article, I don't believe, has made note of that at all. But that's neither here nor there at this point. Um, for the first time in a few years, I actually submitted something to Elixir. So, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on that and other things, because seriously, this, this is, it just gets irritating to see stuff like that and it just got too painful to watch for me so I decided okay forget it I'm just going to look into this and see where it leads anyway as for other cool stuff um, if we record our podcast this Sunday we're going to have three people doing this besides a third person you'll find out who they are Sunday um or, well, rather you'll find out Monday morning, probably, because that's when those podcasts are going to be published. And so I'm, I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to this, and I'm really excited and happy to be doing this. So, uh, with that in mind, I want everybody to know that, well, you all are awesome. Thanks for watching, and i got to get to my workout routine, get some dinner, and go to bed. Hooray, graveyard shift, right? Anyway, talk to you all later. Bye-bye.